Hey everyone, I've been asked by a lot of people to kind of put together a guide as to how to get notes graded. Now, um, there's a lot of different things that are involved in it, um, and I'm about to send off a bunch of notes to get graded. Uh, I want to say for the first time, but it's not exactly true, I did send out one note one time uh, with a group with somebody else's stuff, but this time everything that's getting sent out is all mine. So I've been real hands-on in the process. Um, so let me kind of talk you guys through what I've done, and if you wanted to get notes graded, what you should expect as well. The first thing is you have to determine who's going to do your grading. Now, there's two main places that do the grading. There's PMG and there's PCGS. Generally, you'll get graded, uh, you can get graded notes at either place. Um, I'm under the impression that PCGS focuses on coins and they also do paper money. That may or may not be true, but that's that's always the impression that I've had. I'm not saying that PCS is no good, or PCGS is no good. That's not what I'm saying at all. But PMG stands for paper money guarantee. <laughs> so when it comes to paper money, um, that's why I lean toward PMG. I'm not saying that their grades are any better than PCGS. Uh, I'm just saying that's their name, Paper Money Guarantee. So when it comes to getting money graded, when it comes to getting paper money graded, that's who I tend to look for. Like I said, not knocking anybody. You can see PMG, Paper Money Guarantee. All right, so once you decide on who is going to grade your notes, then you have to figure out what you are going to get graded. Okay, now when it comes to all this stuff, there are certain fees that take place regardless of the number of notes that you have. Um, for instance, shipping and insurance. Uh, the, you, you're going to have to send it. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be paying a lot for shipping. Let's put it that way. Probably $60 each way. So you're talking $60 to get it there. They're going to charge you another $60 to get it back. So you're up to $120. There's a $10 handling fee immediately up right off the top. So, so whatever price you think you're paying you're adding $130 on top of that. So if you wanted to get one note graded, you could look on the chart and figure out how much it should cost for that one note to get graded. But if that's the only note you're sending in, now you're adding $130 on top of that. Now you can see how if you send in one note, that becomes ridiculously expensive. But if you send in 10 notes, that $130 now only adds up to roughly $13 per note. Uh, and that's just the shipping fee. Like I said, we're not talking about the actual grading fee, but that $130 that you're going to get stuck paying regardless, you can see how the more notes you, you send out, the easier it is for that to uh, be dispersed and make it much more likely that it's actually worth it for you to get notes graded. So you don't want to send one note. You want to put together a group. <laughs> okay. Um, another word about PMG here. I'm just at their site. Uh, check out their site. It's uh, pmgnotes.com. Interesting site. Uh, it tells about PMG. Intro, intro to paper money collecting, banknote buying guide, frequently asked questions. Uh, paper money, the actual grading process they go through there, the grading scale. Some of you may really be interested in checking out the grading scale just to get an idea of... Um, what notes qualify as what, the different designations and stuff like that. Just, you know, really interesting stuff. Um, early first release, stuff like this. Uh, how to submit stuff. Here's their services and fees. Submission forms, tracking, events. They've got a news section. They've got a resources section. Um, so the site itself is really interesting just to check out. Um, so I like PMG. One of the other things with PMG is, let's see if I can find it on here. Grading process, getting scales, holders. Where was it? PMG guarantee, submit. What was it? About PMG, intro to money collecting, bankers, buying guide. Um, one of the things they have here, is it resources? Here it is. Yeah, PMG population report. Uh, this is really interesting that you find on the site. Uh, if I go to that population report, What's going to happen is all of the different types of notes are going to pop up. And uh, the note that I happen to have here, what do you know? This is my uh, my 1923 poker chip, uh, which was graded by PMG. Uh, we know this is a legal tender, so let's just really quickly go through this here. Um, trying to find all the different types of notes here. 
is this by country? Yep, there we go. So I'm gonna click on United States. And then for United States notes, they've got Continental, large size legal tender. This is a large size legal tender. So let's click on large size legal tender. Denomination, 10. And then it's gonna list every different $10 legal size note on this side by FR number, they just say catalog number, uh, by the year, by denomination, the total number of each one that has actually been graded, and then every individual note and how it graded. So my particular note, uh, this one is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, FR123 from 1923. So we'll just scroll down here. Where'd it go? Oh, they got it up here, right? Nope, they've got them in order by year, right? There it is, 1923, one, two, three, right there. All right, so that is this particular note. And if I look, there have been 355 of these graded. And I can see the grades, there were two of them graded at six, four at eight, six at 10, 18 at 12, 35 at 15, 38 at 20. Mine is 20. Uh, so mine is one of these 38 graded by PMG. There have been 70 at 25. And then you can simply scroll over here and see how many notes. Here's 30 EPQ, only one has that designation. And you can keep going and see all the different grades for that particular note and how many of them exist. So the nicest note, look at that. There's a couple of really nice additions at the end here. That's pretty amazing. 67 EPQ is the highest grade that any note has gotten here. Uh, that one's got to be worth a fortune. But anyway, when you have a note graded by PC or PMG, you can then go to this particular chart here and see how many notes have been graded in that category, how many above, how many below. And that gives you also an idea of value. All right. So like I said, that is one of the things that I like about P, uh, PMG. I'm sure all the places do different things like that as well. But I just like the way the setup is for PMG. So when it comes to choosing notes to get graded, let me just show the actual sheet. Let's see if this comes up. Uh, this is the submission form. Now the submission form has room for up to 20 notes. Um, if you had 25 notes, you would need two submission forms. Each submission form is its own entry, okay? So as much as you, you know, you could have 100 notes. As much as you want to put 20 here, 20 in the next one, 20 in the next one, 20 in the next one, those are five different submissions, and each one is going to have its own fees. Each one, you may ship them out together, but they will be shipped back to you, most likely separately, which means additional shipping costs. So ideally, the number that you're looking for is 20 notes. You want to send 20 notes. That way you can maximize the amount of notes per shipment and minimize the additional costs per note, if that makes sense to you guys. Now, they have different categories. The thing with these categories here is that each sheet can only have one of these categories on it. So you may have 20 notes that you want to get graded, but if some of them are error notes and some of them are regular notes and some of them are really expensive notes and some of them are modern notes, well, those notes all have to go in separate sheets, in separate orders. So when it comes time to grade notes, what you really want to do is put your notes in the orders of the different tiers that they have here. And I'm going to go through some of these um, and some of the prices because I'm sure you guys are real interested in seeing that. All right. The... Uh, the general uh, consensus is economy, okay? Economy notes are worth up to $1,000 per, and the fee is roughly $30 per, okay? Um, that is pretty much the cheapest way you're going to get notes graded. Uh, there are bulk submissions down here, like for consecutive notes, worth up to $300 a piece. That's $13. But you're talking a 50-note minimum, and <laughs> that is... You know, now you're now whatever you thought you were saving, you're uh, you're multiplying out quantity wise. Um, so yeah, this is all bulk. These are bond and stock certificate prices here. So we're basically going to be looking at uh, the stuff up here. They've got modern notes, which is 1957 to present, worth up to three hundred dollars. Those are going to cost twenty dollars per. Uh, economy. Well, we're going to jump up to economy, which is. Um, basically regular notes worth up to a thousand dollars. Those are $30 a piece to get graded. Then I skipped over economy special because 
the notes that don't qualify as economy go into the economy special uh, designation. And here is how those designations work. For economy, right here, economy notes take roughly 28 working days to get graded. And you can see what it says here. Notes valued up to $1,000, excluding errors, test notes, specimens, proof, essay, contemporary counterfeits, and or uh, notes not listed in Freiburg, uh, Haxby, Chriswell, and so on down the line. The economy special, remember the economy is 30, economy special is 40, would be notes valued up to $1,000 um, using the economy special tier or, or a higher tier. Uh, use this tier for errors, test notes, specimens, basically everything they excluded here. So if it's still worth less than $1,000, you pay the economy special price. <coughs> excuse me, which is 40. And that 40 is per note. So generally speaking, if you're sending in notes, you're going to be sending in economy or economy special. And if your notes get a little more pricey, then they have the standard tier, which is notes up to $3,000. And the price there does jump up to 50 per. And remember, you want to use as many of those at a time as you can because that's all going to go under one shipping category. Don't just ship one note. Then there are other categories as well. Express, uh, $100 is, you know, $100 to begin with. Walkthrough is, is almost immediate turnaround. Unlimited walkthrough is for notes that are 25000 and up. You're going to pay $250 per note plus 1% of the fair market value just to get it graded. So yeah, those things can get expensive. Me, like I said, I'm sending out two uh, packages. I'm sending out Economy uh, because I've got a bunch of notes. I've got, I think it's 12 notes that I'm sending out for Economy and I'm going to send uh, 11 notes out under Economy Special, which are all errors. I'm, I've already got two videos filmed of the particular notes that I'm sending out, uh, so you can look for those in the uh, in the future. So once again, um, when we are talking about stuff that's getting shipped out like this, uh, you're going to have to not only put the quantity, country, da, 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 but you're also going to ha have to assess a value for each note, and that can get a little tricky because uh, this the value is for insurance purposes. It's also for pricing purposes. So if you have a note that's worth like $1,200 and you decide to fudge it and say it's only worth a thousand, <laughs> so it fits in the economy class, if they grade it higher than that and it has a market value higher than that, they will come back and adjust the fee. You don't actually pay the fee until the notes are graded um, because that way they know the final charge on everything. So if you are trying to trying to sneak around stuff, uh, they will get you with the additional charges, you know. So, I mean, maybe that's fine. Maybe maybe you have no problem putting a note in and paying the extra $20 on that one note for doing it this way. Uh, just be aware that it can happen, so you don't have, you're not surprised. Some of the other things that they're going to do here is uh, they have add-on services, which would be stuff like a special label, you know, early release, or, or uh, you can have um, basically anything put on there that you wanted. Uh, if you, you know, a special label right here, you know, put your name on there from your collection, you know, the Stu Pluback collection. I am not doing that. Um, you know, but, uh, if you want a variety designation, a pedigree designation, crossover, whatever, um, you can do all these little things as well. Uh, PMG holders, there's the reholder, the high value reholder. There's, there's all kinds of minor things that can be done here as well on the sheet. And uh, they, they try to make everything in this bottom section so that it doesn't matter what you're doing, there's a space to put everything. But you'll notice that on this side here, required declared value. So that's kind of important. Um, so that way they know how much to insure everything for and to make sure that you've got it in the right category. So seeing this sheet up close and personal is probably just a lot for most of you. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be pa pausing this just to read all the fine print. And if that's the case here, I will just... Uh, go over the top here just so you guys can see everything and you guys can pause this and take your time and see exactly what's on here. Let me go down to the next section here in case anybody wants to pause and read all this stuff. All of this info is going to be available on their website. Um, so yeah, you can check out the website and see all the different things that are there. Now, the bottom part here, total fees. Let's take a peek at this. Total number of notes times the tier price per note equals line one. Variety slash pedigree times service uh, per note, that's line two. Additional fees, you know, all the other things that we talked about up top there. 
then there's the imaging fee if you would choose to have your notes uh, pictured online. Uh, handling fee, that's that $10 fee I was telling you about. Uh, shipping fees, like I said, you're going to pay for shipping, and that gives you the total when you add up all that stuff combined. So, for instance, if you had 10 notes, economy class, 10 notes times 30 is $300. $300, uh, let's see, that would be line one. If you don't want anything special, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you're not going to have them imaged, you're good there. Handling fee is $10, so now we're at $310. And the shipping fee there and back, you're talking another roughly $130. So $310 plus $130, that's $410. $440 to have 10 notes graded. So you break that down, 10 notes, that's $44 per versus if you had one note. So you can see how by having more notes, uh, your price per is reduced. And of course, payment map method that they take right over there. So that covers all of that. Um, the definitions portion. Here's the definitions on this particular sheet. Now, once again, this is all on their website. I'm not going to read through, but I will you know, slowly scroll through all this. If anybody wants to actually take the time to read it on here, I would highly, highly recommend just checking out the website and you'll be able to get all this and print it out for yourself. Um, but yeah, just so that there is a rundown of everything that's here, uh, this is it. Okay. And like I said, you can pause this and read whatever portion of this you would like, or you can check it out online. So then the question becomes, what notes should you get graded? Well, <laughs> don't make your notes more expensive than they need to be. Uh, I went through and I picked out a bunch of stuff that I was going to get graded. And one of the notes I picked was this note right here. Now this is a 1934A $10 North Africa note. And at a glance, it looks like a really nice note. Uh, the color, you got the deep blue, you got the, you know, the bright orange there. The note appears to be in pretty good shape at first glance. Um, when you take a look at this, it's like, yeah, that note should be graded. Except I paid, I think I paid $60 for this note. Okay, so now let's look here. It does have a fold right through here. I can see that there are folds right here. Nothing dramatic, but they're there. This note does show signs of circulation, okay, without a doubt. Now, I've got about, I think I've, I I think I got a little less than 60 on this. I might have somewhere between, you know, 45 and $60, but we're going to call it $60 just for argument's sake, because uh, I'm not going to go look it up right now. But like I said, I've got roughly $60 invested in this note. And I just showed how it's going to run at least, on average, another $44 to have it graded. So I paid $60. It's going to be another $44. That's going to put us over $100 that I'll have invested in this note. Well, I brought out the book. Let's take a look at what the book says about this particular note. Here we go. Move this over here. There's the $10 note, and if I look down here, you can see that the $10, $2309, that's the note. Um, in 20, books out at $85. In a 40, it books out at $125. My note's not going to grade a 40. It might get a 30. It's easily going to get a 20. So my note's going to be somewhere between 20 and 40, which means it's going to be worth somewhere between 85 and 125. Most likely, it's going to come in at about that $100 range. Maybe, if I'm lucky. If I'm unlucky, it'll come in, come back as a 20, okay? If it comes back as a 20, I now have over $105 invested in that note that's now worth 85 bucks, which I'm going to have to wait for it to increase in value to ever get my money back out of it, if that's what I was trying to do. But I just decided that since I've got $60 invested in the note, and it's likely to come back being only worth $100, that particular note, even though it's pretty nice, it's not going to be worth sending off. Those are the kind of decisions you have to make. Now, I have other notes in my collection that I am going to send off that I've gotten for bargain basement prices that I think that are going to grade really well. Uh, one of the notes you guys have seen many times and uh, I have talked about in the past is this Black Eagle. Uh, this Black Eagle is beautiful. It's not perfect, but it's beautiful. Um, you can see it does have, you know, very light folds. And, uh, you know, it, it's a really good note, really, really good paper quality on this. I expect this to get an EPQ. 
Thing is, I only have $60 invested in this. I think I had $65 invested total in this note. And if this note comes back, well, let's take a peek. That note, if that was to come back with any kind of decent grade, where is it? There we go. And just to make sure I've got the right one, let me check the signatures. Spielman and White. Okay. So the Spielman and White, Werner, 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 Spielman, White, uh, 236. If it comes back at a 20, the Spielman and White right here is 195. If it comes back at 20, uh, it's nice in that it may come back at 275. But either way, you're talking 195 or 275. I have $65 in it. Yeah, I will gladly spend $40 to find out what the grade is. So that would be a great note for me to send in, and that's why I'm sending it in. I'm not setting myself up for disappointment. Uh, I've got other notes. This one here has got all kinds of damage to it. It's not in the greatest of shape, but if this comes back graded in 8, that means this note's worth, what was it, $1,500 or something like that? Let's see, $5 silver certificate. Like I said, I went through all this stuff already in, in a different video, but I'm just giving you guys some examples and some food for thought. Um, where did it go? There it is. Okay, if that one comes back in eight, $900. Okay. And uh, I would be happy to have a graded note worth $900 that I don't have that much invested in. So to me, that would make it worth it. I've got 700 invested in it. So do I want 700 invested in it like this, or do I want 740 invested in it and it coming back graded in eight? <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of the process as far as choosing notes. Now, you're not only going to have notes graded so that you can increase their value and you can try to make some money on it. Um, that, that is a good thing to do if, if you choose to do that. But you're also talking about authentication and preservation. So I have also chose a bunch of notes that I view as error notes. Um, some of the notes, I'm not sure how they're going to, you know, what the error designation is going to be. And like I said, I did a whole video on the notes that I'm sending in themselves. This is more about what you should send in. So there are notes that I'm sending in that I'm not sure what the designation is going to be. And there are also error notes that I'm sending in because they're in such good condition. I want those notes preserved in that condition. Because when you do get a note graded, um, that note will then be preserved in that stated grade uh, so that you're able to actually pass the note around and not worry about damaging it. You're in good shape with this. I can show this to anybody I want, and they're not going to damage the note. That is one of the biggest reasons to get a note graded, is the preservation aspect. One other thing is, you may have a note that has an interesting problem. Um, I have notes with interesting problems. Uh, one of them is my educational. <laughs> my $5 educational note. Where'd it go? There it is. My $5 educational note. Everybody says, how come you don't have that graded? Because my one is graded, my two is graded, my five isn't. And why? Because my $5 note right here at the top, it does have a fold, but that fold actually goes through. I don't know if you can see it better on this side. And because of that, you can see just to the left of her nose, there's this little thing here. And if I show it on this side, just to the right of the torch here, you can see right there that that does go through, you know, so it makes it very thin there. So I don't know how that's going to grade. I mean, I know how I'd grade this note, but I don't know what they're going to say about that particular thing. So that's why I'm going to send it in, because I want their opinion on what that is. And that, that pretty much ends all debate. <laughs> that is the best part about having notes graded, is that the debate is now over. It's got a grade. Everybody can argue, well, they graded it higher, they graded it low. It doesn't matter. They graded it. <laughs> that's the important thing. Now, now, the shop that I'm sending it to um, had me write down all the notes that I'm going to be sending in, and had me put the FR numbers down. Um, and they're having me put down, this is the denomination of the notes, and this is what I'm putting down for their values, so that um, we can figure out how to insure them. So those are all the notes that I'm going to do. I'm just going to hand him these. He is going to then um, actually not use the form that I used over here. He's going to put them in online uh, to expedite the process a little bit. 
The other part of this has to do with, well, shipping. How do you send them off? And I asked him that specific question because I know a lot of you guys were interested. And uh, what, what he said he's going to do is um, basically he's going to put all the notes together, put cardboard, stiff cardboard front and back, uh, tape that together, put that in an envelope, tape that shut. <laughs> uh, then he's going to put that in a box contained with bubble wrap and then ship off the box. That's how he's going to be sending these out. And I'm assuming with the amount of shipping that we're paying, it's going to be registered and next day and all that other stuff. So it's not just out there floating around. It's going to be out of his hands and into their hands the very next day. Um, it says on there 28 working days. So what is that? Five weeks, six weeks, and then they'll ship it back like that. So that's about how long I expect the process to take. And I'm very excited to see the outcome on this. Um, you guys are going to be able to see the notes that I've sent out in, like I said, in two separate videos. Um, and I made my assumptions on what the grades are going to be. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the different types of things you can expect when it comes to grading notes. Uh, you can sign up with PMG and you can become a member there and that will allow you to send your own notes in. Um, but to me, I don't send in enough notes to need to become a member. I would just much rather go through my LCS who does this all the time. Uh, they're more than willing to, to do this for me. I'm sure your LCS uh, would be willing to help you out as well. So these are just thoughts that I had, and uh, hopefully I answered a lot of questions that people had when it comes to grading. I will make another video that explains the different types of grades and how to help grade notes. Um, but this is basically just you know my basic guide as to what to expect from the actual grading process. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something, and uh, I'll see you again next week.